right, hold on, I need to do this on a checklist. So Brexit has happened. Um, the club has been taken over. We've been given transfer money to spend. We're still top of the league. Um, we've already signed one player and have a shopping list for more players. The transfer window is open. And I think that's everything. I don't know how we're going to cram it all into one video, though. Hello and welcome to Season 5, Part 5 of non lead to Legend. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode, we are at home against Portsmouth and away against MK Dons. It's January. Since you were last with me, form is still good. I, I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand how we're... We've, there's a gap behind us at the top of the league now. We've just won a game 6-1. Yes, Burton the bottom of the league. But we just scored six goals in the league again for the third time this season. And there's a five in there as well. It is ridiculous how well our league form is going. 24 games gone. We're five points clear at the top of the league and six points clear of MK Dons in third place. It's starting to look like promotion is a possibility, a back-to-back -back promotion. I'm not. I'm deliberately trying not to get ahead of myself. I know that is a massive ask, bearing in mind the pre-season um, prediction for us from the media was for 16th place. Actually, I think it was lower than that the last time we looked. Can they change the pre-season prediction halfway through the season? I, I don't understand that. I, it feels like we were lower the last time we looked at that. Perhaps we weren't, but still, 16th place and to be sat there at the top of the league at just after the halfway mark is crazy talk. Taylor Crossdale is now joint second on the top scorers list. Raquel Pike, despite not banging in quite so many goals this season, is the third best player in the division, apparently. Taylor Crossdale is racking up the Man of the Match awards. But you don't care about any of that right now because I mentioned some big news in the intro to the episode. So firstly, Brexit. It has happened. We got the boring one. Um it all goes through at the end of the season, but nothing's going to change. So it's a bit of a shame. I was kind of hoping by the time we got to the Premier League, there'd be all sorts of crazy restrictions in place. Unfortunately not. We have a boring Brexit. Um, so that's a thing that's happened. More relevant to us right now is that the club takeover has gone through. Um, if we have a... Where do we see who the board is? Um, we probably have to go and click on board. That's that, I imagine that's how we do it. Um, so we have a new owner called Alex O'Connor who will never leave the club of his own volition, apparently. Yeah, you've been here a month, we'll, we'll see about that. But I'm untouchable in his eyes. He's only viewing me on what's happened since he's arrived. And since he's arrived, we've been smashing everything. So he he's quite the Kev fan. Um, he also cleared... The, I don't really get it. He cleared the club's debts, but we've ended up with less money. So... I don't quite understand how that happened because we had over a million pounds in the bank before he came in. He supposedly cleared the debts. We've still got good money. Um, the projection is still positive but no longer profit because in order to do it, he had to take out a new loan. Now, call me a financial buffoon, but we had one loan that was due to be paid off by the end of next year. He came in, cleared the debts, and now we've got nine years worth of loan for nearly two million pounds so i don't really understand it but what he did do is give me seven hundred thousand pounds to spend i've immediately switched a chunk of that round into the wage budget and we are starting to make moves in the transfer market no one's arrived as of yet but we have players due to arrive or one player particularly richard keo is that how you say his name he's arriving today i don't really know why he's not in the squad right now because he it was arranged for him to join us at the start of the transfer window so unless the transfer window hasn't started yet on the 2nd of January, I don't really know why he's not with us. Um, but he has most recently been playing for Derby in the Premier League. So yeah, he didn't play much last year. He's 34 years old now. Um, but he had a full season in the Premier League the year before and a long, long career at Championship and League One level. Um, so he's got bags of experience. Yes, he's 34, but he's only coming in on a seven-month contract. He's here with us until the end of the season. We tried to sign him in the summer, but it fell through then because he wanted 15 grand a week. He's now coming in on about three grand a week, I think. And it's handy because certainly at the time we signed him, Adam Jackson still had a soul con, so we were kind of down to two regular centre-backs. On the announcement of Keogh coming in, um, Smith... Jackson and Plummer all stopped whinging that the squad wasn't strong enough. So if nothing else, it sorted that problem out because bringing him in seems to have been enough to be classed as strengthening the squad. So if anything, we're probably a little bit 
over endowed for centre backs now, but his experience is going to be invaluable. He probably won't play every game, but he's going to be in and around the squad, lending that bit of Premier League now international experience. And I'm happy with him as a player coming in. The other player I think we need to sign is a ball winning midfield player. We tried to make Harry Hamblin permanent. We had a fee agreed with Southampton, but we couldn't arrange a contract with him. We're going to go in for him again. Um, because I've now moved that trans that transfer budget to wage budget around, so hopefully we'll be able to offer him a little bit more money. But if we can bring him in for two hundred thousand or two hundred fifty thousand or whatever the price was that we agreed with Southampton before, I think he'll be a great permanent signing. He's only twenty one, lots of potential. Um, he's not been spectacular for us so far this season, but he's doing a solid job in there, and I would happily have him in as a long-term option as a ball-winning midfielder. Um, we also tried to sign Rob Tomelty permanently, but Bristol City just laughed in my face. Um, and we have a player who's about to join us on loan, Gedeon Zelalim, who is another option as a central midfield player, more of a creative attacking type. So certainly not the ball winner we've been looking for. He's been at Hull most recently. Again, championship experience, played for Rangers, played for Aberdeen. Um, so for someone who's still quite young, quite a lot of experience. I don't know if we're going to get a work permit for him. He's never played for the USA. I don't know if he has a dual nationality. Where do we... So, ah, there you go. He's got German nationality, so it's not an issue anyway. Good job. We got the boring Brexit. Um, so he's about to join us on trial. We'll have a little look at him. He's not played for anyone for over a year because he was up with Hull in the Premier League and didn't get a game for him. Um, but there are other options as well. We've got a decent amount of transfer budget. Once Keo does arrive, we're almost maxed out for wage budgets. So we might have to wiggle that around again. Hopefully, if we can bring in Hamblin and Zelalim as well, I'm going to be pretty happy that that's going to be a squad that can get us promoted this season, which will be rather pleasant. So, let's get into today's games. There are a couple of people in the comments who've been asking about Portsmouth. Well, here you are. We're playing Portsmouth today. Um, I'm not sure where they are in the league. Why can't we see the league from there? Why are none of the buttons working? There we go. So, Portsmouth are just outside the playoff places at the moment. Um, they've been up in League One for the last several years. Um, and these are two big games. They're both... Portsmouth and MK Dons are teams that are challenging for promotion as well. And if you looked at the pre-season predictions, would have been expected to do better than we are. So we kind of need to pick up the wins. Um, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, so this is the team for today's game. And as you can see, there's no longer players in a grump. So Ted Smith's going to be in goal. Um, a back four of Fowler, Jackson, Anderson and Grant. Grant's moving over to left back because obviously Rob Tomelty is suspended because there's a Y in the day today. So Tomelty has to be suspended. So we're going to give Grant a try over at left back. We don't really have any other options. Plummer would probably be the only other option, but I have my doubts about him as a League One player. He did a job for us last year. Not so confident in him this year. And by moving Grant across and shifting Fowler out to right back, it gives us a way to get Adam Jackson back into the side, who's now got superb morale, apparently. He's gone from sulking to superb morale, just like that. It's It's been crazy. Um, and then in midfield, we have my first choice for of Cool as the ball-winning midfielder, and Wordsworth and Keneally either side of him. And then Benteke in behind Pike and Taylor Crossdale, who now have 29 goals between them, already this season and we're only at the halfway point they are very much the form strike partnership of league one at the moment one of them second top scorer in the league the other one third best player in the league so you'd expect us to come out and score some goals today i can't believe we're such strong favorites for this game i mean we're, portsmouth were 10 to 1 that's mad they're eight we're newly promoted yes we're top of the league but Oh, I don't know that we're that strong a favourite, but then I suppose we did, did just score six goals in our last game. And we've got, I mean, we are full of goals again. Um, if you looked at, it, here you go, here's a learning point for us all. Because if you looked at the coach reports, none of our strikers are any better than three-star current ability. And old Kev, Kev from every series he's done before this one and the previous 20 years of playing football manager, would have looked at those three-star coach reports in the summer and thought right we need to sign two strikers three stars not enough let's bring in two strikers let's bin off Taylor Crossdale not bother signing Pike we need league one quality strikers um, but because I'm trying to be financially prudent and engage the brain a little bit more we've kept these players who were tried and tested in the league below given them a chance and goodness me have they taken it although you wouldn't know it from that first half because absolutely nothing happened um 
<laughs> uh, I mean, we've had a lot of possession, but we've not done anything with it yet. There's not really been much in the way of shots from either team. No real chances created. Um, look at the attendance we've got today. 12,000 people in the ground. No wonder the new chairman loves me. We're, we're packing out Roots Hall. What we need now is an announcement that we are actually going to... We've, we've bought a location for our new ground because in all serious oh look at that free kick from Anthony Wordsworth every now and again I have my doubts that he might not be good enough for us anymore and then he reminds me that it doesn't matter what he does from open play he can be a passenger in midfield sometimes if need be because his set piece delivery is it's just the best I've ever seen in football manager that free kick is perfect I know there are a few of you out there in the subscribers who are posh fans. He reminds me of Grant McCann when we had him as a player um, several years ago. Obviously, manager of the club now, but to my eyes, was a bit old. What didn't really offer much in the general open play, but every now and again, he'd come along and do something like that. And there's room in the team for an old man who can hit a good free kick. And um, he's certainly making it difficult to to drop him at least on any kind of long-term basis I've flirted with it every now and again but he always makes his way back into the side and does something beautiful like that when he gets there so make a couple of changes Marriott can come on um yeah as I was saying if with the new board throwing a little bit of money around um fans are starting to come back if we can get a decent ground with a decent size I'm starting to think it's not completely under unrealistic that we maybe go all the way with south end i don't know why i'd leave at the moment we've had a great season last year great season this year we could potentially be in the championship in six months time if we announce a thirty thousand all seat capacity state of the art stadium why not try and get into the premier league with south and we're, we're obviously not going to win the champions league with them that's not how non-league to legend works but we don't necessarily need to be moving on after a couple of years like we usually do. Right, that was nothing if not efficient. Now now let's go and play McDon. And we signed them both. I don't know what was going on with Keo. I thought we'd agreed the permanent signing of him. Apparently we hadn't. It's We must have delayed it at some point. We had to go back and ask for confirmation in the end. Another week went by. I don't know if you can just delay indefinitely. Apparently I did. Um, but we asked for confirmation. He has now arrived. Um, so he's just here through until the end of the season. Earning not very much money at all. But what a useful man to have around. So he's going to be on the bench today. But the one I'm really excited is Zelalim. Gedeon Zelalim. Zelalim. Um, I mean, he just came in. He, according to our coach reports... He was the best midfielder we had at the club when he arrived. Plus, he's got the potential to be a good championship. It doesn't say that anymore. It did say to be a good championship midfielder as he um, develops further. So he comes in. He's going straight into the team today. And having him in there allows me to adjust the tactic to get it a little bit closer to the Everton tactic we've been doing. Because Benteke can just as easily play as a Trequatista. I like a Trequatista. And Zelalim can be the 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 roaming playmaker that I like to use so much. So we're going to switch both of their roles up. It's almost identical to the system we use with Everton now, other than the fact we haven't got anyone who can play as a complete forward. But I'm quite happy with Pike as a defensive forward. He does a very good job doing it. So, um, yeah, we've switched the midfield round a bit. I mean, if it doesn't work, we can just as easily switch back to an advanced playmaker, because apparently Zelalim's better at that. Um, and we can switch Benteke back to an attacking midfielder again. But I just like I like the way a four-man midfield setup like that works. It always looks very pretty. It worked very well with Everton. And I think Zelalim could go on to become an absolute superstar here at Southend. Um, so he comes straight into the team, which means Keneally drops out. Uh, but, sorry, drops back to left back, meaning Grant can go back to right back. And George Fowler drops down to the bench I mean it's going to be it's going to be hard for him to get back into the team he's been great for us this season but with Jackson now back in contention again and now Keo arriving at the club as well um we've got a lot of good centre backs now Ellis Plummer may as well just disappear he's never getting back in the side we've got plenty of other options you can play left back ahead of him and he's never getting in the team at centre back again so hopefully we're going to see something special from the new boy today um that we just want creative brilliance that's what we're hoping for from I mean, it certainly isn't the um isn't the ball winning midfielder i'd hope to bring in but but you know ball winning small women we we want creative awesomeness and allowing benteke to switch to uh trequatista as well 
Um, I know we could have done that before. I just didn't really look. It's when I saw that Zelalim could be a roaming playmaker. I thought, I wonder if Benteke can be a Trequatista. And goodness me, he can. Um, so hopefully it will look even better in midfield now. I still think ball winning midfielder if we can get hold of one. We don't have much in the way of transfer budget left because bringing those two players in on quite a lot of money. I mean, we've spent an extra seven grand a week in wages bringing in those two extra players. So actual transfer budget wise, there's now only um, about 100,000 left after we switched most of it round to um, wage budget. But ball winning midfielder to allow Cool to go out to be box to box. Wordsworth then becomes an impact sub. And then I think we have a title winning team. I just don't see where it can be improved at that point. Maybe in goal, like you all say. Maybe a left-back who doesn't spend half the season suspended. That would be quite handy as well. But I think we, we've assembled a very good South End team here. And um, hopefully the new boy can come in and, and show us why I'm so excited about him. The other good thing as well um, is that he has the potential to deputise for Benteke in behind the front two as well. So it might spell the end of uh, James Cragen because I've never been that overexcited with him when he comes on for Benteke. And now we've got someone with a little bit more creative oomph to him um, who can drop into that role and just gives us a few more options as well. Keneally gets the cross in. Pike tries to get that but doesn't quite make it. Now Grant with a chance to cross. Finds Zellalim who loses out but Wordsworth coming in with a tackle. He doesn't do that very often but there's a ball over the top here. McDonald's are in and luckily... It goes wide of the post. We've, I mean, it's a very even game at the moment. Looking at the stats, we're edging it a little bit on possession. We've had one clear-cut chance each. We just need to nick another goal. I mean, we were efficient against Portsmouth. Let's go and be efficient again. Efficiency certainly has its has its moments where it's useful. There you go. There's a sentence for you. Right, we're going to take off Benteke. And I think we are going to try Zelalim up there, which straight away means we have to switch back from... The way we would, I mean, we have to swap, switch both those roles back to the roles that were previously in that position because there's no one else who can play roaming. Play oh, cool, can play roaming playmaker. Should we leave him as a roaming playmaker? Let's leave him as a. Ro I don't usually do roaming playmaker with an attacking midfielder, but there's no real logic behind that. I ha I haven't done the research. It might work perfectly well. We'll bring Jack Marriott on as well, who we have a bit of a problem with Marriott. Because apparently he has a match highest earner clause in his contract, which I didn't notice when he signed, um, which means he's just had a healthy pay rise because Zelladim came in on 3.8 grand a week, which was which meant Marriott got like a 500 pound a week pay rise as well as a backup striker. So, yeah, read the small print on your contracts, everybody. Um, right. Oh, a, a free kick opportunity. Aaron Cool has been known to whip him in from that right, from the left hand side, just as effectively as Wordsworth does from the from the right. Um, but obviously, didn't happen there because we didn't even get a highlight. Right, we'll bring on Schiavi for Taylor Crossdale for the last ten minutes. A draw away against uh, one of the teams challenging us for an automatic promotion spot is not a bad result. It would have been nice to score more than one goal on this episode after I talked about how full of goals we are. But, you know, there's been progress. Um, I think we're starting to look like a team who possibly deserve to be up in the championship reckoning. Whereas two episodes ago, not so much. There you go. Two efficient performances. I'm being sensible with money. We're doing efficient performances. This isn't me. I think we need to, there needs to be a steward's inquiry. Who's really managing Southend? Why is Grant getting a pay increase? Hopefully it's not too, no, that won't affect Marriott again. That's all right. Um, right, well, that is that for today's video. I'll just show you the transfer budgets and stuff. So we potentially have that last little bit of money to maybe bring in the ball winning midfielder I am so keen to bring in. Although, in the meantime, I'd quite like it to be Hamlin looking long term. So, if we have to wait until the end of the season and bring him in, then that, that will do, I think. And then I think squad is complete and we'll just look to bring in some youngsters for next season, especially if we're in this league again. We don't need to bring any more first teamers in. Um, but that's that. So if you've enjoyed that, make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching. Oh, and if you're looking for the Everton video, we are going to do the last part of Everton. Won't be out until tomorrow now. The, the poorly sick earlier in the week messed my schedule up a little bit. So I'll record that today and it will come out tomorrow so you will get to see the final part of Everton and find out whether we make it into the Champions League